What's up everyone? In my recent video, I had a comment saying that they would like to see a shop update to, uh, to the workshop. They noticed that I now have enclosures here for my Ender 3s and I thought it would be a good idea to explain why I made that change. I also have some new printers. I have the Ender 5 Plus, which uh, has been a huge help in terms of time management and efficiency and just overall uh, a better machine in terms of print quality and maintenance compared to the Ender 3. So first of all, the reason why I switched to the enclosures is because I work out of uh, my garage here and in the winter months it gets really cold and the PLA, no matter how hot I got the build plate, uh, my products would start to warp off of the plate. So I got the enclosures for that reason. Uh, the build plate keeps it warm, keeps the enclosure warm and the prints come out just as good as if I had print them in the summer. I don't print ABS. I didn't do the enclosures for that reason. Um, strictly for the winter months and uh, it keeps everything working pretty well. The also the other change that I made also is I, I um, removed the control board from the Ender 3 and I am now using the Manta M4P from Big Tree Tech with a CB1 uh, control module which is supposed to be an all-in-one clipper solution so I am running Clipper on all of my machines. I think Clipper is a way better firmware. Um, I am running Pressure Advance and input shaping on all of my machines. So every, every single ender prints at 100 millimeters per second. And I limit my flow rate to uh, 10, nine, 9 or 10, I can't remember, uh, millimeters per second squared. So that keeps my extrusion rate really accurate and uh, and then the motion system now being controlled by clipper makes sure that everything is nice and, and clean there's no ghosting or just kind of bad prints in general so switching to clipper definitely has made a huge difference and then previously I used to have 15 or 16 ender threes and they were all lined up across here and I had some down there but when I switched to Clipper, I didn't. I was printing so fast with nine of these machines. I weren't. I wasn't even touching the other ones. So I thought it's pointless to have so many machines if they're just going to sit idle. So I ended up selling them. And then the other issue that I ran into is because these Ender threes were printing so fast. Um, you know the the product that I sell here. Previously, I could only really fit, you know, some, I have slightly bigger cases, but, you know, I can only fit really two on the build plate. And so these were printing so fast, I was coming every two to three hours to reset the, the print, the printers. So I have a full-time job, full-time day job, and it's not... It's not very good to start my work day in the morning, print, and then two or three hours later, these sit idle for the rest of the day until, I, until I'm done with my work to reprint again. So the, increase, increase, the increased speed, I can't talk, the increased speed of the machines uh, actually put a bottleneck on my production, which is why I switched to the Ender 5 Plus. Now I can print eight at a time, and uh, it is way better because this can run for, you know, 10, 13 hours. And it's still running Clipper. Um, and I only have to come to this machine once or twice a day. And I have all the parts that I need. So it's definitely put a huge uh, time saver for me. Uh, it's a big time saver having these machines. And, and I've... I've contemplated getting rid of all of the Enders because the Ender 5 Plus 
is awesome. The build volume is, I have it at 360 millimeters, which is just enough to fit eight of my products. Um, and then I did a Z sync modification and, and uh, up, updated this with Clipper as well. And then of course I'm running the BiQ extruder, which is a great extruder. I've had zero issues with it so far. Uh, another modification I did is I have this 10 inch AC Infinity exhaust fan. And I only really run this whenever uh, I have all the machines going. It just kind of gets a little smelly in here. So I know it's PLA, which is not the biggest cause for concern, but just to be safe, I still vent. Um, I still vent with that with that uh, 10 inch exhaust, which is really good. Uh, other than that, I haven't really made any any major updates. I know I haven't been posting or or anything like that, and that's mainly because I have gotten so busy with orders. Uh, I just don't have time really. And then, as I've said before, I'm not going to create content unless I there's something that has been a huge hurdle for me that I figured out that I know would help others. I don't want to just make videos for the sake of it. Uh, but I will say that I am starting to notice that the extrusion on, on my machines are changing over time. So I've, I've been measuring the extrusion. If I input a command to extrude at 100 millimeters, uh, length or 100 millimeters of filament at a certain flow rate, let's say 10 millimeters per second, uh, I should have a certain amount of, 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 of weight of filament. And I calibrated my extrusions on all nine of my machines and over the course of about three months, that extrusion rate has changed. And I didn't adjust the rotation distance or steps per millimeter. So that really got me wondering. And what I'm starting to discover is that slowly all of the machines are drifting in temperature. I don't know by how much. I actually bought a thermal couple, a couple meter yesterday. So it's going to come in tomorrow. But I suspect that these machines are all not exactly within I don't know let's say 10 centimeters of each other in terms of temperature because I've noticed some of my prints on some machines are shinier than others so that indicates that there's definitely some sort of inconsistency in temperature and I think it has to do with the thermistor so I'm working on a solution for that which I'm sure other people with print farms have this issue maybe it's not as critical for them because it may just be a simple part but I actually have moving parts in my design which really you know really tight tolerances so it does make a difference uh, so I don't know when I'll come up with a solution but I absolutely do need to make one for that issue um, but yeah if there's anything that you want to see or have any questions here's my little dashboard for uh, clipper that I use for my machines and then I just have tabs for all the different uh, printers that I have going and uh, yeah that's really the only big change that I've made so I have my Ender 6 here and then the Palette P3 Pro which is just a personal device honestly I use this to print personal stuff and then I did try to update my CR10S with a Mix 6 build plate and that was a mistake because this thing shakes like crazy and the prints are so ugly. Yeah, that was a waste of money. Maybe I just need uh, bigger stepper motors or something, but yeah. My poor CR10, this was the first printer that I ever had and I just screwed it up, but that's okay. My new favorite machine, Ender 5 Plus. If you're looking for a large build plate for the price, I think you can't beat it, especially if you upgrade it with Clipper. 
So anyways, I won't ramble on anymore. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and then uh, I'll answer them. Thanks guys.